Hello everyone. Today in this video, we will be discussing about an interesting topic that is subpath in Kubernetes volume. So as we know, a pod in Kubernetes is the smallest deployable unit that has a logical collection of one or more containers in it. And these containers include volumes that are used for storage purposes like to share files between containers, to store files from root file system, to use network attached file system such as NFS and many more like this. And these volumes use volume mount, which directs where to mount files. But while working with volumes, we often come with some problem, like when we mount a Kubernetes volume at a mount point that already has some content in it, then the existing content get uh, hidden by our mount content. But in some cases, we would not want to hide the existing content, but want to add the additional files or directories in parallel to the existing content. Uh, other than this, while working with multiple config maps and secrets, one wants to mount multiple keys from different config maps and secrets at the same or at other location, but cannot do it as it gets overwritten. So to solve such type of problem, subpath in volume is used. Basically, a volume is a directory which has some data in it and the contents of it are determined by the particular volume type it used. So how does a volume and a volume mount is defined inside the pod? Volume is defined inside the pod with the help of spec attribute and volume mount is defined with the help of spec.containers attribute. So inside volume mount, there's also another property which we will use that is a mount path, which will specify where to mount the volume contents inside the container. As we discussed in one of the problems earlier, that volumes cannot be mounted inside other volumes as the new content overrides the existing content. But this problem can be solved with the help of subpath in volume mounts. So subpath is a property which has to be specified under volume mount attribute, which specifies a subpath inside the reference volume instead of the root of the container. Like in this code snippet where a subpath is specified and this subpath specifies a subpath inside the referenced volume instead of the root of the container. How does the host keep the track of these volumes? It keeps the track with the help of this following path where a volumes directory is created under pod UID directory where we will get a new directory with a volume type and inside this volume type directory we will get a directory with the name of the volume. If we uh, compare this path with the above code snippet, and for now, if we only consider mount path, then the path look like this, where inside volumes directory, a new directory of volume type empty directory is generated, which has another directory with the name of the volume. And if we consider subpath also, then the path gets slightly changed and looks somehow like this, where under pod UID directory, another new directory instead of volume directory, a volume subpath directory is created, which has another directory with the name of the volume. So from this, we can uh, conclude that subpath append the data to the existing content by creating a new directory that is volume subpath directory, uh, which uh, doesn't override the existing content and adds the data to the existing content. And this is mostly useful when we want to mount a configuration file from config map or want to mount credentials from secrets, but not to mount it whole as a volume. So subpath can be used at this point. Uh, so in the next part, we'll be going to do some hands-on where we'll be going to see two examples where in the first one, we'll be going to see the difference between subpath and mount path. And in the second example, we'll be going to mount different keys at different locations from the config map uh, through the help of subpath. For this, uh, I have already set up the lab and you can also do by clicking on the lab setup button at your end, which will set up the lab. So in the first example, first I'm going to create a Nginx uh, pod with the labels app equal to Nginx. And after creating a pod, I will wait for some time to get the Nginx pod in running status. As soon as it gets in a running status, now I'm going to expose this Nginx pod with the help of a service of type node port. As soon as I expose this Nginx app, I'm going to access the Nginx app with the help of this URL under lab URL section. And on going to this, we are currently able to see the default welcome Nginx page. After exposing the Nginx app with the help of service, 
I'm now going to delete the existing nginx pod uh, because I'm going to create a new nginx pod with mount part and support properties specified in that new nginx pod. For this, first I'm going to create a new directory which we will be using as a volume to be mounted and then going to move the hello.html file which is currently present at the root directory to data directory. Now I'm going to create a nginx pod with labels f equal to nginx and volumes which has a path to the data directory at the root and then going to specify volume mount under the containers attribute which has a mount path to the HTML directory of the nginx. After creating the pod and waiting to get the pod in the running status, I'm again going to access the app and then going to refresh the page and as you can see, after uh, refreshing the page, we are not able to see the default nginx welcome page. And but why this happens? Uh, this happened because uh, we have a specified mount path as uh, this particular path. And this path already has some uh, existing contents in it, which gets overwritten by the content of the data directory. And we can also verify it by doing kubectl exec to the nginx pod by going to the mount path location. And as you can see, we have currently have only one file that is hello.html. We can also run the curl localhost command at the nginx pod and we'll not be able to see the default welcome nginx patch. Again, I'm going to delete the nginx pod and then going to create a new nginx pod. But this time I'm going also going to specify subpart also inside volume mount. Uh, and the subpart will be going to has a value hello.html uh, and also going to append this value at the mount path location path also. Now, after this, I'm going to create the pod and going to wait till it gets in a running status. And then I'm again going to access the nginx app. And after refreshing, I'm again able to see the default nginx welcome page. And this happened because subpath uh, makes the existing content to be remained here and append a new content with the existing content at this mount path location. And we can also verify it with the help of uh, uh, kubectl exec command by going to the mount path location. And as you can see earlier, we are only able to see this hello.html, but now we are able to see existing contents also along with the new content what we appended. We can also run the curl localhost command to verify it and on Running it, we're able to see the default welcome nginx page also. And in the next example, I'm going to create a config map with name nginx config. And for keys, I'm going to specify key files that is nginx.conf and virtualhost.conf. Again, I'm going to apply the config map YAML file with the help of kubectl apply and going to retrieve this config maps with the help of kubectl get config map. After this, I'm going to create the nginx pod and under volumes attribute, I'm going to specify config map as its volume type. And as you can see, I'm under volume mount attribute, I'm going to specify mount path and sub path uh, separately for this two case, uh, which has different uh, mount path locations. Now I'm going to create the nginx pod and going to see its status. Now I'm going to do kubectl exec to the nginx pod to the mount path location. There are two different mount path location to see if we are able to mount the particular config map keys or not. And as you can see that we are able to mount the keys at different location. So there's a catch also while using subpath that subparts will not automatically up get updated when a config map is modified. To get the updated changes of the config map, we have to create a new pod. So in this hands-on lab, we have seen what different problems subpath solves and what is subpath in Kubernetes volume. And with the help of few examples, we were able to solve these problems. Thank you.